So um, I'm going to talk about Arches 4 and then I do some slides and then I go to the website and uh, show it live. So uh, Arches 4 is um, a large data processing project that um, mainly really tries to tackle the cost of aligning um, RNA-seq data to human and mouse reference genomes. And uh, the, the main issue is, is that there is a lot of factors that uh, really drive the costs uh, of such analysis. So one is that it's fairly CPU intensive. Um, and uh, so we want to use cloud resources. Uh, and their trade-off is that they um, are you know, very elastic, so you can just get them when you need them. But while you utilize them, they're way more expensive than uh, a system that you would purchase. So pretty much if you would rent a machine at Amazon for a year, you could buy the whole system outright. Um, same goes for memory. Memory um, on these machines is very expensive. Um, but then uh, the big advantage is really from the cloud are that you have this uh, amazing storage, which is fairly affordable and elastic, and you have very significant network uh, bandwidth. And this is very important because I'm going to touch on how much data we actually have to process uh, for this. So just a uh, real brief, the architecture of Arches 4 is, uh, as I mentioned before, cloud-based. Uh, so we have a dedicated control server that hosts um, an API uh, to which um, the clients of the Arches 4 um, workers can come and receive uh, job descriptions. And uh, they basically run a Dockerized uh, container with a predefined workflow. And uh, so mainly for the Arches 4 uh, workflow, it is to retrieve um, the fastq files align them to a specific reference genome, and then upload that data into a cloud repository. Um, so over time, uh, the data really started to accumulate. So we started this project in 2017. So at that time, there were maybe 100,000 samples of RNA-seq for human and mouse. And uh, by then, it is uh, significantly increased, uh, as you can see on the top right. And uh, so there's always the time delay with the samples when they become available. So it's not really a drop off in samples. So this will just start going up, right? So the, the cost is a, is a really important aspect. And uh, so far we aligned nearly 20 trillion reads, uh, which is significantly more than a petabyte of data. Uh, so you can imagine it's, uh, it's about like a million gigabytes um, so we're like kind of getting in the territory of what like Netflix, let's say, does right when they stream, you know, like uh, a million movies at the same time. This is kind of the scale of this project, and um, so it's uh, more than a million uh, samples that we aligned from thirty thousand experiments. Um, so this is just like a quick breakdown. We have about six hundred thousand mouse samples and seven hundred thousand human samples. And uh, then we also have uh, a couple of samples from other species, but that's like a much uh, smaller data set uh, from like six of the most common RNAC uh, data sets for other species. So the, the resource itself um, uh, basically just tries to build large um, pre-aligned gene count uh, tables that people can use. Uh, so we use this H5 um, data format, which is um, nice for programmatic access. But then we also have APIs that try to serve the data um, on request. And uh, so we pull metadata from Geo and then also inject that into those uh, data files. So this data, um, like we really started to do this project because we wanted this data for our own purposes. Uh, so you can do a lot of stuff with that. So you can build uh, gene expression atlases and tissue and, and like cell lines, uh, cell line expression. Um, and you just get that from this heterogeneous source of data, which I think is, an ex is, an, is a big advantage of uh, resources like GTEx because they're very homogeneous. So that's on the one end, uh, maybe an advantage, but on the other end, you lose a lot of the biological complexity that you encounter in real uh, data and like the differences you will observe from different labs doing similar experiments. Um, so we also use this data to do gene function prediction, as I mentioned before in the gene shot uh, presentation. 
and uh, so it's a pretty wealthy uh, like resource that we you know use for like many of our projects. Uh, so you can do fun things like also look at uh, how many reads, uh, the fraction of reads that actually align in a fast queue file, uh, given uh, different uh, institutions that publish the data. So there's some uh, interesting stuff to find. So the Arches 4 data uh, set is really supposed to be a resource uh, that is to be used by other tools, right? And uh, it's just making the ease of access to this data uh, much easier, right? Because let's say you you have this idea oh there's this experiment they did they did this rna seq uh, uh, analysis you really want really quick access to it you don't want to start aligning it and then realize you can't use the data so you know this should make it much easier to reuse existing rna seq data so there's tons of uh, interesting tools um, that use this uh, data already um, so not going into too much further. And then, uh, so for future plans, so uh, we will, so right now we did only um, cumulative updates uh, to the existing aligned grid. So we'll probably do a complete reanalysis with the new ensemble version that will come out hopefully this year. So we're still waiting uh, for that to happen. Uh, we are actively working on reducing the cost even further. So we're about at um, half a cent per sample right now. And uh, we also want to focus more on uh, single cell. So there's a lot of single cell data so that's coming up. And then we also want to build some uh, uh, improvements in building companion packages for Python and R so you can integrate that easily. So let me go to the website. So this is the landing page of um, of Arches 4. So it's just showing you know, the workflow I showed you before. Um, we have the statistics. Uh, this, uh, real quick, this is the Arches 4 Zoo, which contains the other species. So this is just supporting uh, downloads of the bulk files. I will probably update this uh, in the future. Uh, but so getting started, so this is the main uh, page for the data view. So here we have uh, human data selected. And we're looking at the samples. So this is a three-dimensional representation of uh, all the samples. So each point is an individual sample. And uh, this is a TSNI projection um, of that data. So you can see that the data is quite structured. And uh, um, that's, I guess, what we want to see. So now we can actually search uh, the data in real time. So we can uh, look for macrophages. For example, in the human data, so we can see that uh, there's a lot of macrophages in this uh, this area here. There's a cluster over here. Um, so yeah, so we can do this, and then down here in the selector, we we get uh, this view. So we found three thousand five hundred uh, macrophage samples, uh, and we do this by searching the geo uh, metadata, and this is from one hundred fifty different experiments. So it's pretty encouraging that they all seem to cluster together. Um, we can also search for um, series. So here I look for a series, and this is already pre-annotated in BioJupies. So if I if I go in here, I can directly import the data to BioJupies, which is another tool developed uh, in the Mayan lab. And it allows us to potentially do differential gene expression analysis and uh, more complicated uh, downstream stuff. Um, yeah, so then another brief thing uh, to do is, so here I can also search uh, for signatures. So let's say if I go to the mouse data and I try to search um, signatures that match these up and down regulated genes. Um, uh, this is what I get. So I find this uh, cluster here. So these samples seem to match uh, this input query, but there's like some scattering all around. Um, and this can happen because um, uh, we're not looking for like full signatures as well on these uh, sets. So it's like always a little bit uh, fussy if you uh, search like this. Uh, we also have enrichment where you can look for potentially upregulated transcription factors. Uh, so let's see if this uh, returns something. So here we found about 270 samples uh, that match a transcription factor 
from this uh, Chia library, and we have like different libraries in here. Um, I guess arguably the most important uh, side is the download section. So this is the data that we uh, offer for download. So this is the newest version that just came out um, like uh, two weeks ago. And uh, they get pretty large, so they're about uh, 17 gigabytes. Uh, but uh, it's heavily compressed data, and you can you don't have to unzip the whole file. You can just programmatically get to exactly the data that you want. And so we support uh, gene level counts, transcript counts, and uh, TPM data. TPM data is already 100 gigs, so beware. Uh, we also have uh, expression data from Affymetrix arrays. So there will be in a different uh, uh, size because the probes don't cover all the genes that we detect with RNA-seq, but uh, we added them in the same format. So if you have a script that accesses these H5 files, you can also just access uh, uh, that stuff. And then there's some uh, other stuff that we have. Uh, and then we have also for this, we have an extensive uh, help section. Um, so we have a YouTube video that goes through the website if you want like a more in-depth uh, introduction to it. And uh, so this also shows all the metadata. So this is kind of the inside of an H5 file. Looks a bit scary, but in the end, this is the, the important field that you're interested in. So this is the data expression. And uh, you kind of see the number of uh, samples that we have and the number of genes. And then in the metadata, you will find you know, all the, the sample information, the accession IDs, stuff like that. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's more or less it that I wanted to show. Uh, is there like something small? Uh, oh yeah, right. So we also have gene pages. So if we search for an individual gene, let's say SOX2, um, we get uh, like an overview of uh, predicted gene functions. I guess this is also uh, very similar to what we now have in uh, GeneShot, and that's uh, probably more comprehensive than this. Uh, but this also has uh, the tissue expression atlas and the cell line expression atlas. So if you just want to see in what tissues the gene might be expressed and at what uh, variation or variants, uh, this could be an interesting resource. And uh, yeah. So that's it for me. And then, yeah, if you have questions, um, Great. let me know.